Hi there, and welcome to Ian's Engage channel. I'm Ian. In this video, I'm going to review the Graham Farish Class 20 locomotive. This particular model was introduced during Backman's Winter 2022 British Railway announcements and is based on a loco that was stabled at Thornaby Depot in the 1980s. However, while it's a recent release, I believe the tooling actually dates back to around 2012. The British Rail Class 20 locomotive is a class of diesel electric loco built by English Electric. The locos were part of a group of designs submitted to British Rail for the Type 1 power classification, which was for locos with up to 1000 brake horsepower. In total, there were 228 Class 20s built between 1957 and 1968. This rather large number was partly due to other designs in the Type 1 power range failing to provide reliability. The 73 ton locos, affectionately known as choppers by rail enthusiasts, produce 1000 brake horsepower and can operate at speeds of up to 75 miles per hour. They were designed to work on mixed light freight duties, but could occasionally be seen hauling passenger services. The single cab design caused serious problems with visibility when travelling nose first, so they were often paired nose to nose, affording the driver much better visibility. Pairing locos together also doubled their power, which allowed them to pull much heavier freight trains. This extended the service life of the locos as lighter freight movements shifted to road haulage companies. At time of recording, there are still half a dozen locomotives operating on the UK rail network. In addition to those, there are also over 20 Class 20 locomotives preserved on heritage railways or in private collections. The exact product code of the loco I'm reviewing is shown on the end of the box and can be seen on screen now. The loco ships inside the usual Graham Farish loco packaging, which consists of an outer hard plastic box containing a more flexible plastic inner box that holds the loco. The combination does a good job of keeping the loco safe and sound whether it's in transit or when it's being stored away from the layout. Opening up the box other than the loco, there is a fold out instruction sheet and an accessory pack. The accessory pack contains several separate parts that can be used to enhance the model and includes various pipes, hooks, couplings and even a snowplow. As is becoming usual for me, I was very disappointed with the instruction sheets provided. Although there was an exploded diagram showing the parts of the loco and another diagram showing where the screws were that held the body to the chassis, it contained no detailed or graphical instructions for fitting the DCC decoder. In fact, it urged you to follow the instructions supplied with the decoder and made general statements about removing the blanking board and aligning pins. But obviously, these were things you had to know how to get to first. There was, however, a diagram showing where to fit the accessory bag parts. Also, although there was at least some mention of lubricating the loco, there were no diagrams showing where this lubrication should be applied. This is very poor in my opinion. The loco is fitted with a three pole motor, has pickups on all wheels and has a six pin decoder socket. As my model came DCC ready, I needed to fit a new DCC decoder and I opted for a Backman 36-568A, which is actually manufactured by Zimmo. More of this later. The loco also features directional lighting, where the head code discs light up white in the direction of operation, while the marker lights turn red at the opposite end of the loco. The bogies feature NEM pockets that are fitted with standard Rapido couplers. As mentioned earlier, the loco livery has been applied to represent one of the locos stabled at Thornaby Depot that received customised paintwork in the 1980s. Customisations include red sole bars that bear the unofficial name of the loco, which in this case is Redmire. The Thornaby Depot Kingfisher motif has also been applied next to the enlarged running numbers on the side of the loco. 
The running number is also present on the buffer beam at the rear of the low core between the buffers. The cab roof has been painted white as further customization to distinguish it from locos stabled at other depots. Below the sole bar, there are some nice bogey and battery box details picked out in white and yellow. Paintwork has been well applied in most cases, although on my model, there are a couple of places where lines between differently colored paints aren't as crisp as they could have been. This is a very minor niggle law, as this cannot be seen with the naked eye. Transfers have been nicely applied and even the tiny high voltage warning signs can be read under magnification. The top's data panel isn't quite legible but it's definitely representative of the real thing. The handrails running along the side and the front of the loco have been separately fitted and are made of metal, as are the handrails either side of the driver's doors. The separately fitted parts have been well fitted and there are no visible glue marks anywhere on the loco. There are also some good moulded details on the side of the loco, including panel doors, door handles and side grills. The top of the loco has moulded details that include the exhaust vent and the fan grill. I've already talked about the paintwork of the loco, but not about its main colour. The box says it's BR blue, but to my eye it most certainly isn't, and I believe it to be far too dark. However, I'm not sure whether this is another Thornaby Depot customization or not, but comparing it to a photo of the prototype, I don't think so. To be honest, I think that the darker blue really suits the loco, but I'd have preferred it to be classic BR blue instead. As I've already stated, I opted to purchase the DCC Ready Loco. This meant that I had to remove the bodywork from the chassis in order to fit the decoder chip. The instruction sheet shows the location of the four screws that need to be undone in order to perform this but it wasn't quite that simple. I've actually made a separate video about how I fitted the DCC decoder and I've put a link to it in the description. I won't repeat myself here, but it would have been good to know that you could easily remove the bogies to get at the screws and that the cab could be detached separately from the chassis. As an aside, while the bogies are removed, the worm gears are exposed, making it easier to apply lubrication to them. Gears are also exposed below each bogey, making it possible to apply a small dot of oil without having to remove them. These are all things that could have been mentioned in the instructions, but weren't. Once I had the decoder fitted, running in went very well, and the loco performed flawlessly, although, as with most locos I've encountered, it tends to be a little too fast for my liking. Tweaking the CV values in the speed table should eventually sort this out though. By default, acceleration and deceleration is really smooth between different speeds. The loco also crawls very nicely. I have to say that this is a very well put together model. It's solidly built and weighs in at 56 grams. The weight gives the loco good traction and it can pull fairly long rakes of rolling stock around tight curves and up inclines. While the loco is solidly built, there are some fragile parts and care should be taken when handling it. For instance, I managed to break off the steps in one corner of the loco while attempting to remove the body shell for the first time. Once run in, the loco performs very well, and the customised livery is well applied and looks really good in my opinion. I purchased the DCC ready version of the loco from Rails of Sheffield last year for £136, and then had to equip it with a DCC decoder, which was a further £29, meaning that the total cost was £165. Rails are currently offering the DCC ready version along with a decoder fitting service for £165.94p, which is a good deal in my opinion, as that extra 94p will save you the trouble of having to take your loco apart. 
So, would I purchase the Class 20 again, knowing what I know now? Well, yes. Yes, I think I probably would. I love the details. I love the livery. I love the smooth operation and the pulling power of the loco. Also, as these locos were usually seen in pairs at the head of trains, I think I'm obligated to find Redmire a mate to run around my layout. However, for my next one, I'll definitely be fitting a sound decoder, as I think these locos sound terrific. Anyway, I'll finish up the review with a few running shots of the loco going around my test track. Ok, so that's about it for this review. Do you have one of these locos? If so, what are your experiences with it? Do you think the blue is prototypical or too dark like myself? Please let me know in the comments section. In the meantime, thanks ever so much for watching. Hopefully there'll be another review along soon. Bye.